Sunday feet, let's give God some praise in this place. Anybody ready to lift up the name of Jesus? Anybody ready to lift up the name of Jesus in this place? Came in with a worship, a praise on your heart. Let's lift the name of the Lord on high. We're going to just take it back a little bit. We're going to do this like one big quiet. If you can, just stand on your feet as we have corporate praise and worship in this place. If you are bodied and able. The song is simple. It just says, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Can you just help us say that? Say, Lord, I live. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in. to show us the way and God I thank you anybody know him to be an amazing God 
He is truly amazing. Wonderful, perfect God that he is. Come on and lift your hands in this place. Said you're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're so amazing. So amazing. You're 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 so amazing. So amazing. You heal the sick. You heal the sick. And raise the dead. Raise the dead. You Lord of all. Oh, 
y'all already know when you see me what time it is silence silence real quick i don't believe god need anything just like that there was someone who didn't wake up there was someone who was in an accident and lost some limbs there was someone who was born that couldn't jump, clap, praise, scream, stand, run. So give it up to the God that woke you up this morning, gave you a chance that you did not deserve, forgave you for sins he may have, should not have, but he did because he's a guarantee of his word and his promise, he stands on that. So give it up to the God. If you're sitting on your butt and you got legs to stand on, stand on your feet and give it up to the God that woke you up this morning, started you on your way. Continue standing. Let's all just pray real quick. Eternal God and Father, before we can even go into a prayer, we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you, God, because if you don't do anything else, if we sit and truly think about it, you have done enough. It was us standing in our own way. So God, we ask that you forgive us for that. Because if we're in the way, that means we didn't give you total control. So we move out of our own way. Strongholds we tear down. Generational curses we tear down. Addictions we tear down. We tear them down, God, because we rely on you. Our hope is in you. Our anointing is in you. Our livelihood is in you. And when it's not, God, that's when it's up in shambles. That's when it's chaos. And so, God, we ask that you release any of the chaos in our life because we want to turn it over to you, never to pick it up again. Give us the strength to go out throughout this crazy world. God, we love you. Now, God, that when Sister Brown or Minister Brown, should I say, sorry, Minister Brown is coming to bring the word. God, we ask that you touch her mind, touch her anointing. Let it connect and let it permeate throughout Wings of Love and Facebook and YouTube Live. Touch the, the band members. Touch the praise team as they are going to return after preaching. God, we ask that you show up in this place like never before. In your son Jesus' name, bless our pastor and first lady. Let the church say amen. You can be seated. As you're seating, let's give it up to our man of God, Pastor Alvin Jackson, Sr. <laughs> Wherever Tiffany at, she like, did you just pray with gum in your mouth? <laughs> it's too late now. Um, those, someone was uh, uh, asking about um, the assessment, I can't even think of what it was. I seen someone at the mall that you are still able to give your assessment. They stated, uh, Trustee Jones, uh, I can, again, I'm sorry if you're watching that I forgot your name. Bring it down a little bit. Uh, they stated that they was having um, some financial uh, problems with something and then they wanted to pay the top of next month and that they were, and could they? Uh, so you are still able to pay even after fifth Sunday, correct? Okay, so though we would like, obviously, you have to set a cutoff date, but it's not like a cutoff date that is mandatory, like, oh, yeah, don't pay on this first Sunday, second Sunday in August. But, okay, do we have any announcements before I bring uh, Gary up? Uh, first Lady Sandra? Oh, you know what? Uh, put that um, uh, church anniversary, yes. So we got family and friends next Sunday. Next Sunday, I uh, see a lot of you all are wearing your Wings of Love shirts. I would have had mine. You all know I wasn't supposed to be here. Um, so I was able to make it back in time. But family and friends, next Sunday. Listen, keep it up, Edwin. Um, 
everybody knows what family and friends is. So please, please, please. Matter of fact, let me do it like this. How many of you all like your church and love your church? Okay. So those of you who raise your hand, I get it, right? I'm one of the people that be like, man, listen, I'm only asking once, maybe shoot out a text. Listen, bombard, get on their nerve, bother, irritate, frustrate, any other words that I can't think of right now to get your family and friends and neighbors to church. It's just one Sunday. If they remember somewhere else, that's fine. We're, our pastor is not a pastor, you could take it off, Edwin, um, of stealing members. So that's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to get, we just want you to bring your family and friends uh, to come in and you just tap it, uh, the exact, yeah, there you go. You, we just want you to bring your family and friends. So please, 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 please bring your family and friends. Um, is there a, what y'all normally do? A gift card or some type of gift? You, <laughs> you want a new shirt as in a Wings of Love shirt? So if you want a new Wings of Love shirt, uh, Facebook Live, YouTube, that is uh, First Lady yelling out the different announcements, sorry. Um, because <laughs> I know they're like, what is he, what, I can't hear. Um, Chantanay, could you just wave your hands? If you want a t-shirt, um, Wings of Love, um, I believe you can get um, the I Love My Church shirts, I Am Wild shirts. I believe you will be willing to create new shirts as well. I oh, turn around, Tristan. Just raise your hands so they can see the shirts. There you go. Um, I believe you are willing to at least create new shirts as well if they would like. Okay, so if, even if you are if you one of them people that's like me, real funny actor, and don't like to look like everybody else, it's some of y'all out there I want to stand up for us. You can go to her. <laughs> you can go to Chantanique and create your own shirt with her or create it by yourself and see if she can get it printed out on a shirt, all right? So let's make sure next Sunday we show out and support in droves uh, for our, and again, they said vendors will be here um, selling different, uh, I believe, desserts and other things that they will be selling. But before we do our offering, um, I want, you don't gotta put it up now, Edwin. I wanna bring up uh, the publisher of Shot News, right? Give it up uh, for visitor, pastor's good friend, pastor, good friend, Gary Hunter. Church say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. All right. I am no stranger to Wings of Love. I think I've been here since the beginning as a friend. Well, he's been my friend way before then. But I come to you not only about the shot news to make sure you know it's out there, but to let you know that if you live anywhere from 75 to Southfield, eight mile down to Holland Park over to uh, Tarman, I am running for Wayne County Commissioner in the 5th District. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am running because I'm just sick. Your pastor will tell you I've been in every room possible from the White House to the Hut House. Uh, from Alabama to Mississippi to Florida to wherever you want to go. I did 46 states with President Obama, including Hawaii and Cuba. Uh, I'm not new to politics. I was Kobe Young's youngest appointee. Uh, that's how far back I go. So I'm just sick, Pastor Jackson. And he'll tell you, I've fed people, I've closed people, I've done everything I possibly could without the seat. I'm just trying to figure out what is wrong with the people in the seat that we can't, I don't know about y'all, but I got absolutely nothing from the county commissioners or the city council the whole year we was on shutdown. Did anybody get something? We ought not be electing not nan one of the county commissioners back. They have a trillion dollar budget. And they spend more money outside the city, but you still pay county taxes. They govern the sheriff's budget, the county exec budget, the county treasurer's budget, the county prosecutor's budget, the county uh, uh, clerk's budget. Yes, that's their primary, but their other primary is the tax dollars that they use in the money to do it. 
They got all the money for the PPE and how much did y'all get? How many free masks you get? How much uh, uh, hand sanitizer did you get? All I'm saying, if I can go all over the country and bring stuff back, imagine what I could do if I was a county commissioner. I'm asking for your prayers, number one, your support, number two, and then your vote. Your vote, Gary Hunter for Wayne County Commissioner. If you'd like to help us this next last week and a half, it's 313-442-6111. Uh, I'm saved, but don't call me with nothing crazy. Pastor Jackson will tell you I will. Y'all think Miss Jackson will go off on you. you you'll be saying, sorry, Miss Jackson, you ain't the worst. Uh, somebody say amen. Love you, I respect you. Uh, always been my friend, uh, Miss Jackson has always got me straight when nobody else could. Uh, well, she's gotten us straight, Alvin. Uh, and, and I just want you to know, seriously, it's a lot going on in these rooms, from the governor to the state to the city to the county, and we are not the recipients of it. We got to stop letting them come at the last minute asking for the black vote and there's no reciprocation of anything coming back to the black people. If you ain't bringing nothing to the black community, don't ask for the black vote. Coleman Young said it about 30 years ago. I'd rather lose and win than win and loss. Anybody ask when Coleman Young asked us not to vote for J uh, James Blanchard, because they wasn't giving nothing to Detroit. It don't hurt us not to vote for people who say they're Democrats. It helps us to make a stand and be men and women. And I'm saying to, to, to the governor and everybody else, if y'all ain't coming to our community with nothing, and, and Alvin will tell you, I've been engaged for 30 plus years. And if they won't respect me, I know they ain't gonna respect you. So before y'all do something, Ask the shot news. Did they do anything for you? And if they didn't, I'm sorry. I'd rather win losing than be faked like I done won when they the one won and I really lost. Gary Hunter, Wayne County Commissioner in the 5th District, all the west side. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Pick up a shot news. You got two issues out there. One with Judge Mathis, because uh, I do go all over the country, and one with me and Biden. Uh, one of them is uh, Judge Mathis getting his star. You can enjoy the paper whether you look at that nice looking guy on the front or not. You still have some other folk to look at. Uh, and Judge Mathis getting his star in, on Hollywood. Bless you, Pastor Jackson. Bless you, Preacher of the Hour. Please forgive me, but I didn't did. Y'all really need to be shouting. I done been in about 20 churches, and every bit of 12 of them they ain't got no air condition or no fan. <laughs> Let me try this again. At least 12 of them, I didn't got to work out sitting still. At least 12 of them ain't had no air condition or the fan bringing the air condition down. So y'all need to stand up on your feet and thank your pastor and the leadership for giving you a comfortable space to worship God. Everybody that stays sitting down, I hope y'all get hot in the cool weather. Stand up and say thank you, Jesus, for this air condition. <laughs> you ain't lying cause you've been in ways of love long enough we've had some days where we definitely lose weight sitting in one spot you know and don't let you have one of them great light gray shirts on you know light gray show everything your armpits you sweating everywhere so yes we definitely know about that uh, uh, Mr. Hunter we know about that so support them vote for them um, and I believe, he, like he said, he has the two copies of the shot news out in uh, the vest of you, yes. All right, you can put up offering. Because following offering, we got the word. We got the word. Hey, man, hold I keep telling y'all, I know how I work. Let's give it up for the word of God that's coming to help us throughout the week. Now, Monday, Tuesday coming, you get to Wednesday, and you'll be talking about, oh, my God, I'm ready to quit this job. God, God, God. And, it, and that ring be like, no one's here right now. That's why. It's not going to really say that. I'm just messing with you.
All right. As the um, ushers are in the back, you know this is the time where if you were blessed to have a job, where you would pay your 10% of your earnings, as I, as I always say, because I always repeat after him, your uh, giving is predicated, I mean, your blessing is predicated on how you give versus the gross blessing or the net blessing, your sacrifice, your obedience. Again, as the ushers are doing offering, those of you um, online, as you see on the screen already, you can give through Cash App. Matter of fact, Trustee Jones, can I get you to get that uh, podium or a shorter one of you all can get that podium for uh, Minister Brown, please? Thank you. <clears throat> and whatever she's bringing with her, so she don't have to come out, come up with anything. I believe we are a serving church, so I like to make it as easy as possible, uh, Minister Brown, so you don't have to, you can just come walk on up all smooth. You're gonna use the light, I'm not sure, okay. I know Pastor uses the light, but I know he's like old and blind. Don't. <laughs> and y'all know as y'all giving, y'all know. And listen, I can talk because I mean, at some point I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to that that uh, 50, 60, 70 range, right? But until I get there, I'm just gonna mess with you all. You know, you old, right? When like right now, my glasses are on my face. But I realize the older we get, the lower the glasses come for some reason. And y'all be doing like this. Like, like, I never understood that. Like, why y'all faded back? Or when you're walking around, and everybody like this. And out of nowhere, you don't see nothing in nobody's hand, and you just I see them glasses pop out, and then they want to read it. Like, I just want to know how much it is. You got to get your glasses to tell me the number. <laughs> I hope y'all ain't around when I get old, because y'all going to make me pay for that. <laughs> yeah, like, and I, I ain't talking about like dying or anything like if y'all move out of state or something like just don't be around when I get old <laughs> Keisha <laughs> it's all good people are still giving um, we don't want to rush live if you're still giving Man, all right. Listen, listen. I I get up and preach a lot of for Sunday, so I be you know I'm I'm okay with whatever um, celebration, any uh, clapping or anything. I'm okay without it. But listen, and she's okay. She's very humble. But listen, I want her. I don't care that she's a member and been here for years. I want her to feel a love as she's getting ready to come to bring this word. So please stand on your feet. Make the loudest noise you can. Clap as hard as you can for our very own Minister Sonia Brown. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Can we just give the Lord, we serve a hand clap of praise today for our 38th church anniversary. The Lord has kept us all these years. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. If we could just continue to exalt his name, praise the Lord. I exalt you, my God and my King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. 
The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through the generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all his promises and is faithful in all that he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all that he does. The Lord is near to all who call him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and he saves them. The Lord watches over all of us. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord my whole life. I will sing praises to my God as he is the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord with all of my might. He is the maker of heaven and earth the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and he gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. He frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. You, God, O oh Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praise is to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limits. Sing to the Lord with a grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with the timbrel and the harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the pipes. Praise him with the clash of the cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come today and we thank you. Lord, we praise you, we honor you, and we love you. Lord, we dare not come to this place without offering you a praise. We dare not come to this place without worshiping you. So, Father, as your children are gathered together, as we're gathered either in person or online, Lord, we ask that you touch our hearts, touch our minds, open our ears, allow us to hear what it is you have to say to us. Lord, we just thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for keeping us. And Lord, we pray that at the end of our worship experience today, somebody will ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. To God the Father who loves me, to Jesus Christ who saved me, and to the Holy Ghost who keeps me. To Pastor Jackson, to Lady J, to Minister Alvin Jr., I thank you so much for calling me. To the associate ministers, to the deacons, 
to the trustees and to all the members, friends, and family of Wings of Love. I'm honored to stand before you today, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you for allowing me to break bread with you. And to my husband, Reverend Daryl Brown. Yes. I thank you so much for everything that you do. I don't know if you all know, but it's been a struggle for Daryl lately, and today in particular. So I know it was a press to be here. So I love you, and I thank you for your support. We are coming today from the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. And it reads like this. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice, with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord saying, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. I would like to use for a topic, I grappled with it quite a bit, but I want to talk about when the saints come together, the glory of the Lord will come in. When the saints come together, the glory of the Lord will come in. You may be seated. Church anniversary. This is our church anniversary. Church anniversary is a time for believers who are members of a local assembly to come together and to celebrate their church home, their pastor, their leaders, their members, etc. For years, church anniversary celebrations have been marked by guest churches worshiping together, church dinners and banquets, picnics, programs, special offerings, fundraisers, etc. Church histories are often read, special songs are sang, tributes are given. Church anniversaries are a time of reflection, a time to look back at often humble beginnings and praise God for where he's brought us from. In our case, Wings of Love, we are celebrating 38 years of ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. 38 years. And can I just reminisce for just a little while? Can I just go back down memory lane, Sister Vermin? Can we just reminisce like we've talked about? From the time that a remnant of believers split from Enon and Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, to the initial services that were held at Jeter Memorial Funeral Home, to the purchase of this building located right here at 17133 John R., to the installation of Reverend Alvin Jackson Sr. as the senior pastor of Wings of Love, to the marching processional into the new building, to the renovations and this new addition over here, Mama Jackie, remember this? To the black and white balls, to the reality houses, to the multiple choirs that made up our music ministry, to the church breakfasts and the church dinners, to vacation Bible school, to children's church, to women's day and men's day, 
then later women's conference and men's conference, to the consecration services, to the Sons of Wings revivals, to the tent services in the parking lot, to the mortgage burning ceremony, to the gains and the losses of so many of our beloved members here at Wings of Love. We as a church family are in all of where God has brought us from. Some of our members sitting here today have been here since the beginning, and they're still standing. If I could just have those members who have been here since the beginning, if you could just stand or wave your hand, we just want to give you a round of applause because you've been here for 38 years. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to God. You're still standing. Some of us have joined later in the journey. I'm one of the ones who joined later in the journey. In spite of how long we have individually been a part of the Wings of Love family, we have corporately come, collectively come, whether in person or online, to celebrate the fact that God has allowed us to operate, impact, and in part for yet another year. What an awesome celebration. Glory to God. In today's text, the saints were gathering for another type of church celebration. They were coming together to celebrate the completion of the long-awaited building of God's holy temple in Jerusalem. Let's take a closer look at the history and the setting in today's text. Solomon was the king of Israel. He succeeded his father, David, as king of the Jewish nation. You do remember, as pastor would say, you do remember David, don't you? David was the youngest of Jesse's sons, the little shepherd boy who was anointed to be king by the priest and prophet Samuel while Saul was still reigning as the first king of Israel. David is the one who killed the giant Goliath with a slingshot and a stone. David was the one who was skilled at both playing the harp and slaying tens of thousands of the enemies of the Jews. David loved the Lord and walked faithfully in his will and in his way and was therefore promised by God an earthly kingdom that would be established for generations to come. While David had a heart to build the temple for God, the temple, a permanent earthly residence for the Lord, as opposed to the movable tent that was known as the tabernacle that Moses built. And I'll tell you more about that tabernacle in just a couple of minutes. God would not allow David to do so because he was a man of war. David, therefore, prayed that his son and successor, Solomon, would possess a heart for the Lord and keep the Lord's commandments so that he could build Yahweh's temple. The Lord answered David's prayer, and Solomon was given the opportunity to build both God's temple and his own palace. Now, a quick history lesson for just a second. Y'all know I'm a teacher, so I got to give you some information. When the Israelites were freed from Egyptian bondage, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years as they tried to make their way to Canaan. It was during this time that Moses met with God on Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments. As a result of this meeting, the Lord instructed Moses to build him a tabernacle, one that housed the Ark of the Covenant, a sacred piece of furniture which contained the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments written on them. And this ark also had the mercy seat of the altar where atonement was made for the sins of the people. 
The Ark of the Covenant was the designated place that the Lord would commune with his people. And this Ark traveled to and fro with the Jews in that movable tabernacle. Now back to what we're talking about today. Building God's temple was significant. Because it symbolized stability for the Jews, a permanent place to live and worship of God in a designated place for his people to meet with him. This much anticipated temple would be built on Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. The people gave their full support to building this auspicious temple, and they were looking forward to worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in a permanent building. My first point is the preparation of the temple. Because Solomon was undergoing this most sacred task of building a permanent earthly dwelling place for Yahweh, he knew that the work had to be flawless. Solomon spared no expense for the materials used to build the temple or for the skilled laborers that he hired to do the work. He had high expectations for this temple. Second Chronicles chapter 2, verses 3 through 10 tell us, Solomon sent this message to Hiram, king of Tyre. Send me cedar logs, as you did for my father David, when you sent him cedar to build a palace to live in. Now I am about to build a temple for the name of the Lord my God and to dedicate it to him for burning fragrant incense before him, setting out the consecrated bread regularly and for making burnt offerings every morning and evening on the Sabbaths, at the new moons, and at the appointed festivals of the Lord our God. This is a lasting ordinance for Israel. The temple I am going to build will be great, because our God is greater than all other gods. And then coming down to verse 7. Send me, therefore, a man skilled in work in gold and silver, bronze and iron, and in purple, crimson, and blue yarn, and experienced in the art of engraving, to work in Judah and Jerusalem with my skilled workers, whom my father David provided. Send me also cedar, juniper, and algum logs, those are types of wood he was requesting, from Lebanon, for I know that your servants are skilled in cutting timber there. My servants will work with yours to provide me with plenty of lumber. Why? Because the temple I build must be large and magnificent. I will give your servants, here's the thing, Solomon put his money where his mouth was. I will give your servants, the woodsmen who cut the timber, 20,000 cores. Cores is a unit of measurement. It is about 3,600 tons. So 20,000 cores of ground wheat, 20,000 cores of barley, 20,000 baths of wine. Baths is another unit of measurement, equals about 120,000 gallons of wine and 20,000 baths of olive oil. See, Solomon was not going to shortchange anybody because he wanted the best work, so he was willing to give the best pay for the best temple for the best God ever. That's what his thinking was. Solomon understood that God's earthly dwelling place must contain the best possible resources found on earth. And he did everything in his power to ensure that no shortcuts were taken. Now, I just have a question that I need to ask. And I, I don't want you to get mad at me when I ask it. I just, I'm asking it because I just want you to think, because I had to think about it myself. And here it is. I wonder if we have adopted 
this same type of attitude about our church building. That's, that's what I want to know. Now, this message is for everybody. For, so if you're not a member of Wings of Love, that's okay. But I'm specifically talking to Wings of Love because it's our anniversary. So we're, we're talking right now. I wonder if we have taken the kind of pride in the upkeep of this house, which is designated for corporate worship. This same attitude that Solomon had when he was building the temple for God and the attitude that the people subsequently took on. I'm just wondering, I just want you to think about that as we go on. And I'm going to my second point. The second point is the consecration of the leaders. Second Chronicles 5 and 11 states, the priests then withdrew from the holy place. All the priests who were there had consecrated themselves regardless of their divisions. Consecration is defined as cleansing someone or something from sin and ritual impurity and then to dedicating the person or the thing for a specific purpose. So consecration has two parts. There's a cleansing and there's a dedication. In the Old Testament style of worship, leaders had to consecrate themselves prior to performing any service to the Lord. They could not do anything until they consecrated themselves. Their consecration consisted of fasting, prayer, bathing, anointing, studying, and abstaining from pleasurable activities. The, yes, Lord, my God, yes. <laughs> the leaders took their responsibilities seriously because they understood that the spiritual fate of the people rested on their shoulders. So now I need us to think again for just a minute. Can you imagine, can you imagine how powerful our church body would be if we could consistently adopt the attitude of these Jewish leaders? How life-changing would our worship services be if we all did this? How much change could we bring to this corner of John R. and McNichols if we really disciplined ourselves, and I'm talking to me too, to fast, to pray, to study, to serve on a regular basis, not just once a year, but I mean on a regular basis. How many pimps and prostitutes could we usher to deliverance? And understand, I'm not picking on anybody, but anybody that goes here knows that there are prostitutes, both men and women, that walk up and down this street day and night. And if there's a prostitute, you know there's a pimp nearby. So how many could we deliver if we really adopted this attitude? How many drug addicts could we help set free? How many people who are hungry could be fed both naturally and spiritually? How many broken hearts could be mended? How many people battling with depression and other forms of mental illness could be renewed in their minds? How many sick people could walk right up in this house and be healed? How many people who are carrying the burden of guilt, of shame, of bitterness could come in and find refreshment? How many children could be rescued from the hands of rapists, from gang violence, from human traffickers, from low self-esteem? How many souls could be saved if we could just make a corporate decision to live lives that are on fire for our God? That's the question I want you to ponder right there. Glory. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 asks a question that I think we should consider today. 
Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? In other words, don't you understand that that beautiful brick and mortar building, that temple that Solomon built in the Old Testament to offer as an earthly dwelling place for God, the creator of the universe, don't you understand that that place is actually us, you and me, it's actually us. God's earthly dwelling place has been transferred from the building to the people. And if we are housing God's presence in our earthly bodies, then we ought to consecrate ourselves so that the glory of the Lord will come in. My third point is the unification of the saints. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13, just the first part, the A clause, says this. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. One sound, that oneness, that unity. So no room for division. No room for division. No room for bad attitudes and I can work with this one but I can't work with that one no room for I'm not gonna speak to this one today because I don't like it and I'm gonna go sit all the way over there it's no room for any of that because there's oneness the act of unifying coming together as one it helps to propel the work of the Lord forward you do remember that the Holy Ghost did not feel the saints gathered in the upper room until they were unified. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. When God's people come together in unity, it moves him to respond to our worship. Being unified as a body of believers is so important that Jesus himself prayed that both his disciples and those who would later become Christ followers would be unified. In John, the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, this is what Jesus prayed. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be one in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. That's why it's important, so that the world will believe that Jesus has actually sent us. So many people say that they won't step foot in a church because they don't believe what they see in the lives of those that are going to church on a regular basis. Listen, I'm coming in love. This is for all of us. So what I'm saying is that if we were more unified than according to the prayer that Jesus Christ himself prayed, then the world would start to believe that he actually sent us. Jesus knew that his followers could accomplish so much more if they acted with one mind and worked together like the parts of one body. Wings of love, I challenge us to operate with this same mindset. God has allowed us to remain in existence for 38 years. There is still more work for us to do. Even though the order of service may have changed, our mission has not. We are still here to worship together and to learn of God so that we can be equipped to affect change in our lives and in our communities and so that souls may be saved. That is still our mission. 
if we could really internalize this challenge, if we could really take it in and come together, I have no doubt that the glory of the Lord will come in. Glory to God. I'm wrapping up. I'm at my last point. My last point is the glory of God. Praise God. It's going back to our text, 2 Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Chronicles chapter 5, the B clause of 13 and verse 14. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Family, can you imagine? I need you to think about this one more time. Can you imagine the awesome worship service that took place during the dedication back in the Old Testament of that new temple? Can you imagine the awe that the Jews must have felt when they saw that cloud-filled room, that same cloud that led the Jews through the wilderness by day and turned into a pillar of fire at night, that same cloud that met Moses on Mount Sinai, that same cloud that covered the tabernacle that Moses built in the 40th chapter of exodus that same cloud but it's called a wind that descended on the saints gathered in the upper room on the day of pentecost this cloud represents the glory of god the glory of god i've used that a few times now that's the weightiness the heaviness of his glory and his splendor the glory of God is so powerful that when Moses descended Mount Sinai after communing with the Lord via the cloud, the Bible says that his face was radiant. So much so that Aaron and the Israelites were afraid to go near him. You see, saints, when we encounter the glory of the Lord, there is no way that we cannot be changed. I wonder if we're ready today to experience that kind of glory. I really wonder. I wonder if we can focus our minds enough, if we can eliminate distractions enough. I wonder if we can align our hearts enough to welcome the glory of the Lord in this sanctuary. In 2013, singer and songwriter Donald Lawrence, he penned the song, when the saints go to worship. And in that song, the soloist says, when the saints go to worship, that's when the king of kings will come in. When the saints go up in praise, that's when the spirit shall inhabit this place. When the saints get on one accord and begin to bless the Lord, then the king who is strong and mighty Oh, the king who is mighty in battle. Oh, the king of glory shall come in. And then the choir joins her. And then they say, when the saints go to worship, that's when deliverance will take place. When the saints go up in praise, all Satan's powers are erased. Every trap the enemy sets can't work won't work when the king who is strong and mighty oh the king who is mighty in battle yeah the king of glory shall come in and then the song ends like this they say we welcome you in we welcome you in you're the king and you're invited to come in we welcome you in we welcome you in. You're the king and you're invited to come in. Is there anybody in here today, either online or in person, who wants to welcome him in? Is there 
anybody who is ready to get on one accord and bless the Lord so that the king of glory will come in, so that he will come into this sanctuary right here, so that he will come into our lives, so that he will come into our minds, so that he will come into our homes, so that he will come into our jobs, so that he will come into our finances, so that he will come into our health, so that he will come into our children, so that he will come into our schools, so that he will come into our community. Because when the king of glory comes in, we cannot stay the same. We do not have the capacity to experience the glory of God and stay the same. We will change. Our minds will change. Then our hearts will change. And after our hearts change, our attitudes will change. And after our attitudes change, then our actions change. After our actions change, then our circumstances will change. After our circumstances change, then our relationships will change. After our relationships will change, the way we operate in our environments will change. Our church will change. Is anybody ready for a change? Are you ready to let God do the work? Are you ready to get on one accord? Are you ready to consecrate yourselves? Are you ready to live lives that are on fire for God? Are you ready to put away those other selfish attitudes so that we can serve with all that we have? Are you ready to celebrate the fact that God has kept us for all these years, during all this time, doing all these things, blessing all these people? He's kept our pastor all these years, preaching all those sermons, marrying all those couples, burying all those people, praying for those that have been sick. He has touched us in so many ways. Church, we have so much to be thankful for, and I implore you today, to not let this moment pass without saying, Lord, Lord, I need your glory to come in. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to come together with my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ because I need the glory of the Lord right here in my life, in my mind, in my circumstances, in my body, in my marriage, on my job, in my home, on my block in everything that I come across. Lord, I thank you. And we need to know that if we do it, if we're faithful, if we make up the mind, if we say that we're going to do it, if we come together with one accord, that the king of glory will come right on in. I know I need the king of glory to come in. I know I want to see the glory in this place. There have been many times that I have been here and have seen the glory of the Lord come in this place. That's what I want to see again because we need to see his glory. Some of us have never experienced it before. We need to see his glory because there is real change that needs to take place. And we are the ones to do it, but we have to be equipped. And so, Lord... Lord, we invite you in today. We need the king of glory to come in. If you're watching at home right now, even though you're not physically with us, we're here in spirit. You need the Lord to come into your life as well. You need him to come into your home. You need him to help you make some decisions. You need him to lead you and guide you every step of the way. So, Lord, we welcome you in. We give room for you to come in right now. We give room for you to make whatever changes you need to make. We need you to operate in this time and in this place right now. Lord, we need you to send down the Holy Ghost fire on us right now. We want to see that cloud of glory in this place. Glory. He's worthy to be praised. 
Don't stop praising him. That's how we invite him in. When we worship him, when we open our mouths, when we press through, that's how we invite him in. It's through our worship. It's when we push everything else to the side. It's when we focus on the Lord. That's when he comes in. So, Lord, we invite you today. And we invite you through our praise. We invite you through our worship. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. You are high and lifted up. Your train fills the temple. You loved us before we loved ourselves. You loved us when we were yet sinners. You sent your son to die for us. He died for us so that we might be saved. He got up on that cross. He strapped his hand low. He stretched out wide. They took him in the grave, and then he rose again with all power on the third day. That's the whole gospel message right now. If you've never heard it, you just heard it right there. This is how we invite the Lord to come into our situations. Glory to God. The church, the doors of the church are open. The praise team is coming. I implore you, don't miss the opportunity to experience the glory of the Lord and be changed. You might be asking, well, how can I be changed? The answer is simple. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart, knocking. Just let him in. Jesus is ready to meet you right where you are. Don't shy away. Step up and meet him. For those who are already saved, but you might be feeling disconnected, now is your opportunity to unite with the body of believers gathered together with one mind and with one heart. Ask the Lord to reveal his glory in this place and in your life and watch the change that takes place. Now is the time. It is your opportunity. Come on, stand on your feet. Anybody want the Lord to get the glory? Minister Brown said we need the, the king of glory to come in this place. So let's lift our hands as we worship him. The song is simple. It just says, for your glory, God. I'll do anything for you to get the glory. Say, Lord, if I find favor in your sight lord please hear my heart cry i'm desperately waiting to be where you are how cross is desert how travel near or far for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king said Lord if I Yeah. 
give him some praise y'all so that the Lord of God can get the glory hallelujah come, come, we can do better than that we need the king of glory to come into yes. this place yes, God. into our lives into our circumstances the circumstances are only going to change when you give God the praise that you know that he deserves so come on and lift up your hands and give God the glory come on and lift up your hands and give God the praise up your hands and magnify that wonderful God that we serve. For your glory, God, we'll do anything for you to get the glory, for you to get the praise, for you to get the honor, oh God. Hallelujah. For your glory, Jesus. some praise in this place. Hallelujah. I know we get in a hurry. The message has already been preached. Thank God for the message and the messenger. Come on, give her a rousing round of applause. Thank God. That was mind-provoking, soul-stirring, and challenging. It was timely and relevant for us collectively. Come on, I'm going to clap with you. That was a church anniversary sermon. You didn't have to call nobody in. So proud. God bless you, those streaming live. Going to get out of your way. You ought to enter the presence and power. That's the glory of God. Shekinah glory do not just have to enter this sanctuary. It can come into your room. He can come into your room, your living room, your bedroom, come into your den. He can come into your life. Praise God that he have a people for his temple. Don't look at me. Come on. Thank God for a people for his temple. Oh, that's my prayer. Boy, I've been praying about that, that God's glory will come in this place every time we meet. I mean, that message was meaty, sound, and full of substance. I want the glory to come so strong in this place that it will affect.
affect those in the community. I'm going I believe it's gonna happen. Come on, Ella May, we just come. Amen. God bless you. All right. Lady J Pastor Jackson, we come in. We have come in, Sister Olivia Boozer. Would you please stand back to reinstate with us? Edwin, where you at? Come on. I'm so proud of you, man. Come on, give it up for Deacon Edwin Stafford. I love my deacons, but that's one I can depend on. Amen. Come on. Pastor, we accept sister on the real statement. Sister Boo. Boozer. You know, Lady J, a teacher, boy. You know, she's, she speaks with clarity. Boozer. Okay, we got it. Thank you, Lady J. God bless you. We love you. Oh, my sister, you know, we go way back. And I praise God that you were listening, streaming live. Amen. You say, Pastor, I'm listening. Wings of Love Ministries, before we leave, we ought to praise God for those who are listening, streaming live. We. We love you, those who are streaming live. Thank you for your listening ear. But this sister here, Sister Booz, has been a member here at this church, and I praise God for you. Amen. I'm going to be quiet. What do you have to say to the church? Well, I want to say that um, I've been struggling through a lot back and forth. And it was just so much going on, and I was just turning into the wrong things. Just looking for a way out. Yeah. I, I was so torn up that I could try to commit suicide and my kids found me. <laughs> it was just so much pressure. But last Sunday, Pastor said, make a sacrificial offer of fifty dollars. And I did. And the things that I was praying for had opened up on Friday. And I knew then that I was needed to go back under my leadership of where I've been for the last 12 years, off and on. And I, and I wanted to thank you for 38 years. I bless you um, through your cash app for your 38 years of leadership. And I have never seen I always been in church, but I never seen a person that held a church in the title for 38 years wow. strong. Wow. Bless, you. Bless you. Bless you. Let me tell you, Sister Boozer, amen, and I'm going to bounce. We got to get out of here. Let me tell you who held this church. You know who the glue held this church? J-E-S-U-S. Come on, Sister Cameron. You don't see, you don't even see Pastor Jackson's picture up there. I took my picture down because nobody ought to come to church looking to no pastor. They ought to look to Jesus. Come on, help me. Fullers, amen. So I praise God that he held this ministry together. Amen. And thank, wait, now we did, Sister Brown, amen. You, I mean, boy, you would, ooh, you did your whole work. <laughs> We want to praise God. Thank you, Pillars, Sister Thomas and other brother Tom and others, these those others, uh, Dean White, others who are still still here. Pillars. Okay, now I want every new member that have come to this ministry stand and we praise God for you. Come on, stand up, every new member, every every new member. More recently, come on, that come to this ministry. All the members of Wings of Love, come on, stand up. We won. <laughs> now give yourselves a hand, praise God. Pastor Jackson, we also have coming under Christian experience, Sister Priscilla James. She is online, and she wants to become a member as well. Wow, come on, Wings. Pastor, we accept Sister James under Christian experience. Amen. God bless you, Sister James. We thank you for deciding to become a member of this church. We thank you because 
everybody in this church is a B I P. You're very important to us, and we love you. Thank you for becoming a member. Come on, Wings. Praise God for her. Um, Pastor Jackson, Ella has come for prayer, and she requested that I be the person to pray for her. So would you please stand? Sister Boozer, you can go back to your seat. Uh, Minister Brown will be contacting you. Thank you. Dear God, we come today thanking you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for keeping me. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. I thank you for this sister who's coming, God. I don't know what it is. I don't need to know what it is. Lord, you know what it is. I thank you, God, for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon her. I ask now, Jesus, whatever it is she's searching for, whatever it is she needs, Lord, whatever that need needs to be met, I pray, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, if it is in your will that you would give it to her. Bless her children. Bless her family. Bless her home, Lord. I pray that every her bless her going out and her coming in. I pray that when she gets back home, everything is all the better because she was obedient. She came to worship you today. And I pray, Lord Jesus, you would give her everything that she needs. Now, God, I come thanking you, Lord. I, it's, I'm sensing in my spirit, Lord, that not just Sister Ella May needs spirit, uh, prayer. Lord, I'm coming because there's some people here, Lord, who are dealing with some financial issues. There are some people who are dealing with some legal issues, known and unknown to me. And I'm asking you now, Lord, we've heard it so many times before, that you're a doctor in the sick room. Lord, I know you can be a lawyer in the courtroom. I thank you now, Jesus, because whatever it is, you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you and ask you for all of these blessings in the name of Jesus and all of God's people said amen, amen, amen. amen. God bless you. I want you to look at Ella May, how she flossing, how sharp she is. Ella May came in here, I'm telling you, straight off the street. And I mean, she hugged me down there. I didn't care how dirty, I didn't care about none of that. She, she came, she hugged me, I just I hugged her, touching the greed and prayed. And God touched and healed her, saved her. Look at her now. God can clean you up, straighten you up. Can he do it, Ella May? Hallelujah. Thank you so much. $38, that's all we're asking, $38. And uh, we're asking for our ministry to give $100. Amen. I really appreciate that. $38, Pastor Paid. God bless you. I appreciate uh, that you give. Thir I'm just looking at you, Scott. I ain't asking about $38. I remember I worked at McDonald's. They sold that Big Mac for 99 cents. They made millions of dollars. I just watched it. Didn't give us no raise or nothing. But, you know, hey, 99 cents they made that uh, for the cost of that Big Mac. Okay, so we're asking $38. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for those that did give and those streaming live. God bless you. Thank you for your gift. $38. Amen. Hundred dollars for from the ministries. Amen. God bless your heart. All right, family and friends day. Come here. I'm a, I'm gonna do the offering. I just want to say something about family and friends. I'm gonna get that's my director right there. Give it up for Minister Jackson. I tell you. <laughs> amen. I praise God for him. Amen. Technology. Amen. This new thing with young people. I don't I don't know how to do it. Thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Family and friends, bring your family members and especially bring a neighbor, a friend uh, to meet Christ. That's the main important thing. We've got to win souls. Amen. Every saved soul got to do what? Win a soul. Save a soul. Okay. Now, don't forget, Minister Brown, amen. Cash out. It's on the screen. Okay. Her cash out. Boy, you look like a professor right there. Cash out. Remember her, amen, and we're going to give to her on the day where she can buy some books or get clothes clean or anything of that nature, amen. Put a gift in your hand. Boy, that was a good message, amen. God, come on, give it up again. I mean, wow. Amen, Mr. Brown, I don't know. She was preaching like she was looking for a church, didn't she? <laughs> Woo, that was good, boy. I need to be preached too, Amen. All right, put a gift in your hand. We're going to have Mr. Brown uh, to come and dismiss. Ushers, will you come? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, come on, Minister Brown. 
Praise the Lord. We can stand as we're preparing to dismiss. I thank you for just being here today, and I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for listening, and I pray that we will just remember that when the saints get together, the glory of the Lord will come in. I also want to thank, I saw some of my friends um, that I invited. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you. God bless you. Let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come, Lord. We thank you for this worship experience. Lord, we thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for the two sisters who have joined with us on today. They, they want to be a part of the saints coming together so that the glory of the Lord will come into their lives. I'm asking that you bless them richly in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, as we prepare to go our separate ways, I'm asking that you give your angels charge over us. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one that is standing here today or that is online today, that you will just allow your spirit to rest, rule, and abide. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Wings, just one last announcement. Uh, just retouching on what Reverend said about friends and family. Listen, it is next Sunday. <clears throat> we are going to start sharp at 1030. Also, we are, and we don't believe in paying people to come to church. But we are having a special giveaway for the uh, person who brings the most family and friends. Let me say that one more time. The person who brings the most family and friends, over five people. All right, so come in here and you got like two people. You know, that ain't going to do it. You're going to have to have over five people. We have a special gift giveaway to that person. Listen, when you come in here next Sunday, be prepared to receive a miracle and a blessing. Pastor has a word that's going to set this church on fire. And bring somebody with you so they can witness what's going to go on next week. All right, Wings. Love you. Bless you.